it's my privilege now to present the Sir Roger Bannister Medal. The first time this was uh, awarded was to Sir Roger Bannister himself to honour and commemorate his, uh, 50, the 50th anniversary of his first sub four minute mile. He was uh, so delighted with the award that he asked for it to be continued on an annual basis and that it be awarded to someone who had a, given a lifetime achievement in sport and exercise medicine. And so it has been given yearly since then to a lot of very notable sport and exercise medicine physicians and scientists. The medal itself, for those who won't get the chance to see it, is a bronze medal. It's minted by the Royal Mint and the name of the recipient is on the edge. This year the award goes to Professor Harry Thomason. Now unfortunately Harry died earlier this year and it is with great uh, sadness obviously to all of us that, that we lost a great friend and mentor but for me particularly it was sad that we didn't have the opportunity to tell him that he had been nominated for the award but we had discussed it um, Malcolm Reed, Peter Thomas all who had been um, ex-presidents of BASM that, that it was Harry's due honour but unfortunately uh, he died before we could let him know so a little bit about Harry himself and we are very fortunate and I must welcome his family who are here today to re receive the award on his behalf. We have his wife Murray, his son Tim, his daughter-in-law Teresa and Natasha, his granddaughter. So welcome to all of you and uh, I hope you in enjoy the evening. So Harry was born on the 29th of February 1940, so he really wasn't all that old when he died, was he? He enjoyed his sport considerably um, at school, playing rugby, cricket, athletics and swimming. And after school he went to Chester College on a teacher training course. And that is sort of pivotal in many ways of his future development. Having finished that, he went to Loughborough, where he graduated in human biology and physiology. He then went off to the Royal Colleges of Advanced Technology in uh, Salford, where he specialised in human performance under extreme conditions. And he used athletes, cyclists and deep sea divers as his subjects. In 1965, he applied to research the hearts of cyclists in the Tour de France. He was rejected, but fortunately the British milk race was going to take place, uh, which was the Round Britain cycle race, and they allowed him to uh, test people on that. At the same time, the Institute of Sports Medicine uh, decided that it was time that we had some dope testing. Now drug testing had been done on an individual basis but never on a mass event and so Harry was, was tasked with setting up a program uh, and, and getting physiology labs to, to do all the necessary measurements and this was not greeted with a great deal of pleasure from the participants particularly when a number of them failed the dope tests. That included one Briton and three Spaniards. Harry was then told by his bosses that uh, uh, he would have to give a press release uh, and, and he was called forward. He said, don't worry, we'll be there to support you. So he turned up uh, and unfortunately <laughs> everyone else refused, <laughs> refused to go and he was there by himself and had a, an awful lot of grief 
from particularly the Spaniards, so much so that the whole Spanish team uh, refused to carry on and withdrew. But Harry himself had a, a large number of personal threats to his life, uh, such that he was very cautious about ever going anywhere near Spain in the future. But this was the first time that drug testing had been done at a massive event. So in 1963 he joined BASM, so that takes us back a long time. And because of his educational skills, was very soon running courses back in Salford. Such was his fame that in 1977 he was invited to set up a department of physical education and sports science back in Loughborough. And, of course, uh, that was where he'd done a lot of training. He was pleased to go there. And the uh, vice-chancellor at the time uh, told him that if you can raise some money for your research, I will match it pound for pound. Well, that cost him an awful lot of money because Harry, in the next year or so, managed, managed to source £250,000, 100000 of which came from the Sports Council. That was the first time the Sports Council had ever given any money towards research, and it was given by Sir Roger Bannister, who had been made chairman of the Sports Council at the time. So there was a nice link there between Harry and Sir Roger. Um, he continued to raise funds, in fact, all his career and became sort of famous for it in, in, uh, in Loughborough, uh, which was very helpful later on when he was uh, involved more in BASM, because in 1973 he was appointed to the BASM Executive Committee, and he sat on the committee for 30 years, the last 16 of which he was treasurer. So. The importance of his dealings with money was very apparent then. And of course that was a time when Basm had very little money. And to have someone with the solid foundation of, of, as Harry had, I think, was, t was terribly important. And that was when I first came to know Harry, when I was on the, the, the committee back in the late 80s and early 90s. On retiring from the Basm um, executive, he was made an uh, honorary life member and vice president of the association. And I know he rem remained very proud of his association. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the time to recount all the other major achievements in his very, very busy life. His series of senior posts at, at Loughborough as pro vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellor, and he was so good that they actually made a second post for him because they didn't feel that he, they felt that only running one department wasn't enough, so they gave him a second one to run. He had huge international um, associations. Big associations with, with, with uh, major industry, the details of which we really can't go into. But his role as an educator uh, was far and wide internationally. He was advisor to the Singapore Ministry of Education for 30 years. Um, he had educational work with Egypt, Thailand, Indonesia, Jamaica, Oman, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and uh, latterly as Director of Education for the China-UK Enterprise. So he had unbelievable um, invol involvement. So although he had retired in name, he certainly didn't retire as far as work was concerned. He was Britain's representative on the European Obesity Panel and one of his tasks was the responsibility for reviewing every article produced on obesity and analysing it for authenticity and validity. So he was probably the world's leading authority in obesity. And that was work he was doing for BASM uh, as, as well up until his death. 
He also helped me considerably because I, he knew I was researching the history of, of sports medicine and BASM in particular. And we frequently met at the Wellcome Medical Library. At the first meeting, I realised that he had such a phenomenal memory and had so many stories to tell that I couldn't remember half of what he told me. So that for future meetings, I needed to video record them so that I could review them afterwards. And indeed, the last time I met Harry was at Sir Roger Bannister's memorial meeting at the Royal College of Physicians in London. We were due to meet again in August, so his death came as a terrible shock to me as well as, obviously, his family and everyone else. Harry was an amazing man. He truly made a massive lifetime contribution to sports medicine. And I know that Sir Roger would be delighted to know that this year his medal would go to Harry Thomason. So it gives me great pleasure to present <coughs> this medal for 2019 to Harry's wife, Marie. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Graham. May I make a very personal uh, thank you to you for the tribute that you made uh, in, on behalf of the family uh, on the obituary to Harry in the Basel magazine, which was produced in, in, was it September, I think it was? Yes. Yeah. Um, Harry was very um, modest man, in a way, and he would be very humble at actually accepting this award today, and thank you very much for that. If he ever had a, a, and it left a legacy, he certainly left one for me, uh, one that would be very difficult for me to overcome and has taken quite a toll on me uh, since he died. And that being a typical academic, he left me with a very messy office and chaos <laughs> garden shed. Uh, anyway, thank you on behalf of my family for allowing us to be here and to accept this award. Thank you very much. Thank you.